This is John Cole with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you and I'm gonna actually truly show you guys that actually I have more leg room when I fly on Spirit Airlines that I know some of you guys hate than when I'm traveling in a car. Check it out, man. I have like no leg room and I have no headroom. Look at this. This car is totally loaded to the gills with plants edible plants and fresh produce. So actually I'm gonna show you guys and give you guys a tour of how well I got this car packed like Tetris style for all my organic fruits and vegetables and all the uh, plants that I'll be growing into the food that actually I'll be eating. After that I'm gonna take you guys inside to give you guys a rundown box by box, flat by flat, plant by plant of all the different plants and produce I bought in this plant and produce hall. All right, so now I'm gonna walk you around this car to show you guys how packed it is. It's a Ford Focus hatchback, or station wagon. Uh, this is one of the windows. I mean, you could look in, all you see in there are just plants. It's like totally full. There's the back window, more plants. Here's the back window. It's just all full of plants. I mean, that's the brake light. All you see is just plants in there. Some of my plants didn't like too much sun on the dry bag. Once again, inside here, oops, there's me. <laughs> more plants, and even more plants. All right, let's go ahead and open this uh, trunk up and show you guys what we got. All right, that's what it looks like, man. We got organic pineapples underneath there, cactus fruit, ripe mangoes, my luggage down there somewhere, and just plants like totally, totally, totally all the way packed in here. You can't even see, it's so dense. All right, let's open this, this side door here. Make sure nothing falls out. We got lots of plants. I mean, I got, I got some luggage stored down there and I just put even a cardboard with these one gallon pots. Right up there, we got some tomatoes, uh, peppers, lots of nice Reuben basil up there. Oh, and I got some uh, horseradish over in there totally packed. All right, let's go ahead and open the other side door. All right, up on the top we got the poplar, then we got my thermal electric cooler down here. Even down below, we're like right behind the seat, you guys could see. I mean, there it is right there. I got some turmeric. <laughs> and then uh, up behind the seat here, we got more one gallon pots with some uh, peppers in there. And this is just what it looks like. I mean, inside the car, <laughs> you could make it. I mean, it's just, totally crammed up. I mean, right down there, got mangoes, and above that, we got some jicama. All right, head inside, inside the car now, looking back from the rear view mirror. This is the view in the back. You don't see anything but just a whole bunch of plants, and yeah, all below that, lots of box of produce, and here's my backpack. <laughs> so as you guys can see, I'm a nut. <laughs> I packed this totally full. I almost thought I bought too much stuff today, but I didn't. Anyways, I gotta get this unpacked, and then we'll show you guys actually uh, what I got and how much it cost me. So just got the car all unpacked and brought out all the produce and we're gonna do like conveyor belt style, show you guys everything I got. Not only the produce, which is kind of cool, but also more importantly, the plants, which I'm really into these days. And actually, although I got some really good deals at the produce terminal today, I got some really good deals on the plants too and I'm really excited about growing some really unique and rare varieties. Anyways, on to the show. Uh, basically, I got two cases um, of these guys. These are the Dole Certified Organic Pineapples. You guys know how much certified organic pineapples go for your whole paycheck or whatever. Sometimes four, five, six dollars even. I think I've seen them for six ninety nine once. But anyways, this case of six of them were only nine dollars. So that's like a dollar fifty each for certified organic pineapple. The deal was so good. Got two cases. Uh, these will just end up basically in juice. Lately I've been juicing like uh, one pineapple, like a bunch of purple carrots, maybe a couple uh, regular orange carrots, uh, different colors of beets. So I've been using like uh, the bullseye beet, a uh, red beet, and a golden beet, and some ginger and turmeric for an amazing drink. Next up, I got some grapes. I love grapes. Uh, these are organic grapes. 
And uh, these are organic Masters Touch black grapes. They're in pretty good shape. I might have to pick through them a little bit, but yeah, black grapes. I do encourage you guys when purchasing grapes, try to purchase wine grapes if you're avail if, if they're available near you. They're kind of rare. Other than that, I actually generally prefer the black grapes due to the higher antioxidant content. Uh, this was 18 pound box for eight dollars, so that's less than 50 cents a pound for organic grapes. They also have some organic red grapes that are like six dollars for the same amount but they are kind of looking more rough so you know when in doubt get the ones that are actually in better shape and going to store longer you know these guys will easily store you know several weeks in the fridge um no problem whatsoever and probably most of these because they're not like super sweet they're destined to turn into a juice and i'll probably juice maybe some kale with some grapes to make a really good recipe next up i bought a case of divine organics cantaloupes and uh, here they are. This is a nine case, nine pieces in a case, and the price was a uh, thirteen dollars for nine pieces, which is an amazing deal. Uh, generally, I like to juice the cantaloupes if they're not tasting so good. And generally, I find if you buy them the cantaloupes like at the store or in trade, not like at a farmer's market, um, they're generally not as ripe as they could be. I mean, one of the ways to know is if it like the cantaloupe should basically slip off the vine if it's been cut. It's probably not as ripe as it could be. Also, I tend generally like to look for a nice color. Uh, this one still is kind of green underneath the skin, telling me it's not going to be super optimal. Uh, that being said, Divine Organics, they may grow in Mexico or the U.S., and hopefully the U.S., which this is these are grown in California, are of higher quality. Next up, I got a whole case of Rambutans. Here we go. I saw Rambutans at like three different places this morning. One place, they were charging $3 a pound, which is kind of expensive. Those ones were from Mexico, and then I found another place they were charging like, uh, it was five pounds for 20 bucks, that's like four dollars a pound. And then I found this deal, uh, these are grown in Mexico, a uh, 15 pound crate right here, as you guys can see, 21 bucks. So that's an amazing deal, and Lauren was amazed at just how big you know, some of these Rambutans actually are. And they're actually quite decent. I wouldn't say they're like award-winning fruit, but they're actually quite sweet. Uh, these will be one of the first things we eat because they are kind of, you know, one of the most perishable items. So next up, got some organic white nectarines. They're totally my favorite. I do encourage you guys to get the white nectarines and white peaches whenever you can. Uh, it's said that they're actually higher in phytonutrients, antioxidants, than the yellow ones. And here, this is basically a 64 count. So it was two layers, 64 count. Some of these guys are a little bit rough. Oh yeah, some of them are molding and I gotta like uh, put these in the refrigeration ASAP. I ate these for breakfast, they're decent. Generally, I don't like to buy stone fruit like, uh, you know, peaches and nectarines through trade because they're always never picked as ripe as it could be. Anyways, this case uh, was an amazing deal. It was uh, 64 pieces for just eight bucks. And uh, I'll be eating these really quick style. Probably I'll have a meal of Rami Tans and a meal of these. Cut out the bad parts and I'll actually be quite happy. Now the thing I want to mention you guys is, you know, I've had a video before on how I store my fruit. Uh, generally a lot of the fruit will actually have like a, a label on the side, like tell you like what, what degree, uh, you know, to store it at. Because a certain fruit doesn't like to be too cold or too warm. Um, I, I'll put a link down below if I remember to that video. But these guys definitely have to go in my fridge, and I have three different fridges at three different temperatures. Apart, I put these guys in the fridge that are like around the in the 30s, high, like like 36 degrees. One of the things I always have to be aware of about when shopping at the produce terminal is like keep your eye open. Not only do I look for the USDA organic sign on the boxes as I'm walking around the terminal, but I also actually like to just key in and look at the fruit itself. So uh, these fruits itself, they start with a number nine and they're 94401. So these are organic uh, peaches and they're organic white peaches. I could tell by the, by the light coloring of the skin. I generally like white fruit uh, peaches and nectarines more. And uh, this is what this case looks like. Lots of white peaches. Now these guys are kind of hard. If I eat these, they're gonna be crunchy but I'm hoping that they're gonna get soft a little bit. I'm gonna probably like layer them out, single file, single layer out of the fridge and let them ripen up. This one's getting a little bit soft. 
we'll see what happens. I don't think these are ever going to be as super ripe as some of the ones I've tree picked early in the season. But hey, you know, for uh, $18 for 25 pounds, less than a dollar a pound, definitely a good deal. Because even if they're no good and they just stay hard and they never ripen it properly, I'll juice them and make some amazing white peach nectar. All right, next up, we got a box of Patagonia. Let's see what's in the box here. And these are organic. One nice, big, huge box of apples. So we got all these uh, organic Fuji apples here. I'm feeling them. They're still a bit firm. They're not super soft yet. You know, each they all look pretty good. Uh, I think I'm going to run out of fridge space. So I don't know that I'm going to get to fridge all these apples, but I'm going to keep, keep them in a cool place. They should still stay fresh for quite a while. They smell quite nice, and I just couldn't pass up on this deal, even though apples are not my favorite fruit. Um, it was 40 pounds of apples for organic Fuji's, uh, one of my favorite types, for just 12 bucks. Here's another amazing deal you can't scoff at, and multiple vendors had this deal this morning as I walked around. Organic Chiquita Bananas. Nice box. Nice, really nice color. Look at that. Nice yellow color, uh, 40 pounds. These are yellow but still firm. I'm gonna separate these guys out because you leave them in the box like this with the plastic clothes, they're gonna ripen fast and I have so much fruit right now, I want these guys to ripen slow so I'm gonna put them in a cool place of my house where they have uh, lots of air circulation, maybe even put a fan on them uh, to get the ethylene and gas away so the ethylene and gas doesn't congregate and ripen my fruit faster. Um, 40 pounds for 10 bucks, man. It's like a quarter a pound. I cannot resist that price. You know, even though bananas are probably my least favorite fruit of anything I bought, um, we generally like to let them get all ripe and then we freeze them. And I love to put bananas in, you know, smoothies to make them nice and cold or even turn them into the banana ice cream, you know, which is just 100% bananas through a juicer um, to make an amazing summer treat that will keep you cool, but also be really healthy. I do like to spike that and add in a lot of fresh berries like blueberries, um, strawberries, when I'm making the banana ice cream as well. Next up, we've got lots of organic mangoes. I bought four cases of these guys. These are the Purity Organic Mangoes in various stages of ripeness. Got three cases that are really ripe, and then one case that hopefully is gonna ripen up in a little bit. They're a little bit soft but uh, maybe not the right color yet, but hopefully just letting them hang out in a nice area of my home. Uh, they'll ripen up and I'll be able to eat those, you know, maybe in like a couple weeks. But anyways, these organic mangoes, you guys know how much these organic mangoes sell from the store, what, like 99 cents, maybe on sale, maybe $1.99 each, right? A case of 20 organic mangoes, like, this is like prime ripeness, man. Really good color, also nice and soft. You want to make sure that they're not too wrinkled and they don't have too many brown spots, especially up near the, the stem end, because that could mean there's like black rot or brown rot on the inside. Perfect condition, $4 a case of 20. Such an amazing deal. You can't even buy it stu this stuff this cheap for non-organic. All right, next up, more organic mangoes. Like, it was a mango haven at the uh, terminal this morning. Like, they had so many mangoes. A lot of them were, like, not ripe, not in good shape. I, and, and generally, I like to buy organic mangoes if I could find them. But when I first got to the terminal, I found these guys, right, on both these sides, these sides, on either side. Nine pieces, $5. Look at the color on that. The color on that is amazing to me. It just like signals to me that this is going to be a really super good, delicious mango. They're also a tad bit soft, but not too soft yet. Like perfect condition for eating. Anyways, these were uh, $5 for nine pieces. An amazing deal. Then later on, that's when I found the other, um, you know, Adolfo style, the, or the yellow mangoes. And then I also found some of these guys, which are just purity uh, standard mangoes. And these are a lot firmer. Uh, this was... Uh, 12 pieces for four bucks. So this is an amazing deal, but these are also firmer too. So once again, you know, I like to buy produce in different stages of ripeness. I got some stuff ripe for ripe now, right now, and some stuff for later on. Next up, I got a case of one of my favorite fruits here, the cactus fruit. I got the uh, red style cactus fruit. You know, they had both the red and the green style today. Um, lots of different vendors. I chose to get some from a vendor that weren't like super good shape, 
But a really good price. The, the prevailing rate was like $18 for a 40 pound case. Um, this case is about 35 pounds, but it was only $12. And these uh, fruits are in a, you know, some of them are maybe not the best of shape, but that's all right because I'll probably be juicing these guys tomorrow uh, with my uh, coconut to make a coconut milk cactus fruit juice. And the, I really like the cactus fruits because they're, uh, you know, one of the most highest anti-inflammatory fruits that are out there especially well you know specifically when they are the you know deep red purple uh, variety the pigments in there they got the beta lanes and a lot of other good phytonutrients that I really love so the last fruit we got on this haul today are these guys right here as you guys can see there's two of them two babies and uh, these are the jackfruit. If you've never picked out jackfruit before, please be sure to check my video. I'll put a link down below. That's what these guys look like, two nice jackfruit. Uh, both these are in really good shape, uh, decent color, and both are actually nice and soft, and they actually have a nice uh, jackfruit fragrance. So I'm hoping that they're gonna be really good, really delicious. The last few jackfruits I've had have been actually uh, fairly decent. I've gotten them locally, and uh, locally, I've gotten them for between 69 79 cents a pound generally on sale. Uh, these guys at the terminal were 50 cents a pound. That being said, you know, I don't mind paying in a couple 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents more a pound to make sure that I'm going to get a good jackfruit. Because even if you're getting a cheap jackfruit and it's not a good one, it's not worth buying in any case. Anyways, uh, these guys were 50 cents a pound. Uh, this is about, uh, I think... Uh, 35 pounds, so it's like 17 bucks, something like that. So now what we're gonna get into are the plants that I bought, aside from just the produce that I buy, you know, my, the plants are actually even more interesting to me, and in my opinion, more valuable. As much as I got some amazing deals on the produce this time, right? The, th the thing is this, you literally eat the produce, I eat the cactus fruit, I eat the mangoes, I eat them, and yeah, okay, you could plant the seeds and grow another tree or whatever, it takes a number of years. They're gone, right? But if you buy a plant, and actually I just noticed a caterpillar on the back of this guy, but if you buy a plant, right, I have 16 basil plants here. They are approximately a dollar each or so, and uh, bought wholesale. And now I have literally basil for the whole season. I won't have to buy any basil. You know, and basil is quite expensive. You know, just a couple ounces is like three, four dollars. And so now, uh, growing your own food is much more valuable and in addition you could grow unique and interesting varieties so i didn't just get your standard italian basil that uh, most of you guys see i got the red reuben basil that are a nice deep rich purplish color you know i've been really into the purple pigmented foods lately you know as i learn more and more some of the different pigmented foods deep pigmented foods such as the purple foods are very high antioxidant and even more nutritious than this standard green variety. But unfortunately, unless you go to a farmer's market, you're probably never going to find the purple pigmented basil, uh, you know, or quite rarely near you. So that's why I say grow it. In addition, I got another flat here, 16 plants. Uh, most of this is the rungia or the mushroom plant. And that's this guy right here, mushroom plants. And the reason why I got this guy is because you could just pick off these leaves and eat them like a salad. And when you eat it, it has a unique flavor like no other. And yes, it kind of reminds you of eating mushrooms, right? I like to eat some cooked mushroom powder sometimes for the health benefits. But, you know, I really want to... Uh, have a massive diversity of different leafy greens, especially ones that are new and different and interesting that will grow well in my climate. So I've got about, I know, 12 of these guys. I also got one lemongrass and some stevia uh, in this flat uh, that's gonna be growing in my garden this season. So the next two flats I got, I got almost a whole flat of okra and I got one six pack of the Malbar spinach, another really good leafy green to grow in the hot summer. And the okra, Yet again, another really good vegetable to grow in the hot summer. And this happens to be the red uh, okra. I like the red okra. Once again, it's pigmented. And I want to encourage you guys to eat foods that you might not normally eat, right? I never really used to eat okra in any large way until I, it was one of the easiest things that I could grow in my climate zone. And now I grow it every year. And I love eating the okra. I love to pick it when it's really young and tender. 
and it's just amazing to eat raw. If it gets too mature for me, then I'll juice it on up, and it makes a ver very interesting juice that you most might choke on. But then what I do is I'll dehydrate it, and then it's actually quite delicious dehydrated. And then over on this side, we've got a lot of cucumbers. So I got a lot of Persian cucumbers and a few Japanese cucumbers that hopefully I'm going to be experimenting with this year to see how well it does in the hot summer heat. You know, um, I didn't buy any cucumbers this time through. Normally I'd buy, I'd buy cucumbers, but you know, hey, if these guys will be producing for me in just, uh, you know, 30 to 60 days that I could be having my own cucumbers, why buy them? And the other thing I want to let you guys know, if you guys haven't yet planted a garden and you have the space to do it, I would highly encourage you guys to do it. And I teach gardening on my other YouTube channel, growingyourgreens.com. So check me out there. It really isn't too hard. And I do encourage you guys, if you guys are new gardeners, haven't gardened before, start off with healthy starter plants like I've started with today. These plants are actually quite healthy. And unless I really mess up bad, they're going to stay alive and they're going to be producing for me. And you guys could do it too. It's not super difficult. And much like I get wholesale prices on the produce, I also get a wholesale prices on these plants. I'll post a link down below to the nursery where I got these guys at, CPG Nursery. Uh, amazing uh, people down there on Firestone Boulevard. I think that's what, like uh, Norwalk, California. Yeah, pick out your own plants. Buy them by the, uh, the flat for the best deals. All right, so next up, two more flats of amazing plants. Number one, over on this side, we got one that most of you guys probably are not familiar with, unless maybe you're from Mexico and eat traditionally. Uh, this is known as Papalo, which is originally from South America. And uh, this is an herb, actually, but me and my girlfriend love this. It kind of has taste reminiscent of cilantro, but then a little bit stronger, but it's not really like cilantro. So if you don't like cilantro, you'll probably, you might like this one. But the thing is, this one, I can't grow cilantro in the summer. It just doesn't work. Cilantro is a cool weather vegetable. It bolts too quickly. But this guy loved the hot summer heat, 100 degrees. This guy laughs. It grows like literally six inches a day and puts off a lot of these nice butterfly style leaves that we love to just harvest. Like tonight's salad, actually, we just harvested some of these guys and put it in there for a nice uh, burst of flavor. But yeah, these guys grow really well. And around a buck a pot, um, you know, a plant. And some of these pots, actually, this one has like seven plants in there. Some have three. Amazing deal. And just has a really nice flavor. It actually bugs barely even mess with it, right? And then over on this side, another story here. Uh, these are the my famous tree collards. So these are the green tree collards. And imagine growing a tree, right? I know you guys might have trees out in front of your yard. But imagine growing a tree. You literally plant this tree collard once. You know, provided you live in maybe zone seven or above, maybe eight. Um, you don't get like too hard or from frosts. And basically grows into a tree. The tallest one of these I've had have, has been about 12 feet tall. And all the leaves on here uh, taste just like collard greens. They're especially sweeter in the wintertime and a little more, uh, you know, hot or stronger flavored in the summer. Um, I like to generally eat them mostly in the winter and the cool seasons, but I'll also eat them in the summer, just not as many, and just a few a few go a long way. And like Dr. Furman tells you in some of my videos, right, uh, these are very valuable greens, the cruciferous vegetables. You should eat something from a cruciferous family each and every day. I don't recommend necessarily eating the same thing from the cruciferous family of plants every day, but something a little bit different, right? And, uh, you know... With the tree collards, I'm able to do that each and every day. I could have, you know, tree collards every day, but I always try to like rotate. Sometimes I'll have dinosaur kale, sometimes I'll have the tree collards, sometimes I'll have the cauliflower, or maybe sometimes the broccoli. Hopefully broccoli sprouts when I get those up and growing one of these days. Uh, but yeah, rotate your greens. And also, as you see, I'm growing a lot of different varieties in my garden. So like if I have a crop failure on one crop, guess what? I'm going to still have, you know, 50 other things that I'm growing. So I've saved the best flat for last. And that's this guy right here. If you guys follow me on my gardening channel, I might have a video about this one of these days. Um, but this is another new wild food that you guys can eat that I've been recently researching and finally been able to get my hands on. And actually, you know, in a big quantity. So I got like six six packs. It's like 36 plants. Um, once again, really good prices at CPG. I don't think I could have found them anywhere else. And this is actually known as the uh, variegated red apple. And this is known as the uh, Aptinia variegata. And this is a succulent ground cover with variegated leaves and deep 
rose flowers, adds contrast, easy to grow, low maintenance, full sun, drought tolerant, can be used in containers. So what better plant could you grow than a succulent that's drought tolerant, that likes full sun, that's easy to grow, right? And it's also edible, which is totally insane. So I mean, yeah, growing lettuce could be quite a challenge and a chore in the summertime in hot climates. But this guy, I mean, thrives in low water, hot climate situation. It's perfect. And the leaves are edible. So before I bought them, I was snacking on them. And, you know, I've read that the, the variegated variety actually doesn't taste as good as like the solid um, Aptinia red apple. But just eating them. I mean, it just tastes like another mild green, actually, the Ragunia, or the mushroom plant, actually tasted stronger. This one has a nice mild flavor. I mean, I don't taste any kind of oxalates or anything like that, like in, like, New Zealand spinach. This has a much more agreeable flavor. So, you know, every night, you know, we're going to be growing a lot of this stuff. Hopefully, it's just going to take over as a ground cover all over my garden. I'm going to plant it in some of the least desirable spaces. And because I have 36 plants, I'm going to experiment, you know, plant some where it's more wet plant some where it's dry, plant some in the shade, plant some in full sun, and see what happens, see what grows, see what does well, see what doesn't do well. And nonetheless, a lot of this stuff is plant some in containers, some of it's going to survive. I'm going to probably plant some in containers around the base of some of my fruit trees and see what happens. But yeah, just another way you could grow lots of food and, you know, food that you wouldn't normally be eaten. I do encourage you guys to visit a website, pfaf.org, that's Plants for a Future Database, where they list over like 5,000 different kinds of plants that are in some way or another edible, useful, or medicinal that we could eat that you may not be familiar with, right? Like Dr. Joel Furman says, the one nutrient you need the most is the one you're not getting, and I want to make sure I'm getting the phytonutrients from this actinia plant, and especially the really cool red flowers. They're starting to come on. There's not too many right now, but yeah, I'm going to be really looking forward to eat some of the nice red, delicious, pigmented flowers of the Aptinia. So for sure I got some good deals at the CPG Nursery where basically four inch pots were running me around a dollar each plus or minus depending on the specific variety and the six packs were you know really good price as well uh, but I also went to the Pasadena Farmers Market this trip it was on a Saturday and met an amazing plant seller there a really cool guy and I got these guys these were uh, basically uh, two for five, so they're two fifty each for really nice developed peppers. And actually, I got a few uh, uh, sweet one hundreds um, or some cherry tomatoes as well, and all different kinds of uh, sweet peppers. You also have some hots, but I really just want the sweet ones. And so these are nice developed plants for two fifty. So they, yeah, that's like uh, you know dollar and a half more than some of the other plants, but these are a lot more established. And let me tell you something, right? When you get a more established plant, it's a lot harder to kill. And especially in extreme climates where it's like 100 plus degrees every day, right? Getting an established plant with more developed roots, a lot easier to be transplanted into the garden. So I was glad I was able to buy these and actually fit them in the car on the way back. And yes, everything that I'm showing you guys in this video was fit into the car that you guys saw that was packed earlier. So yeah, I'm glad I'm getting to grow uh, some of these uh, sweet peppers to replace some of the ones that didn't quite make it in my garden. So now i got more plants to share with you guys here on the chopping block. <laughs> so over on this side, these three plants here, I got these from Mimosa Nursery LA. They're known as a uh, tropical fruit nursery in LA, kind of near Montebello. And they have lots of tropical fruits, but they have a few non-fruiting uh, trees and plants and shrubs. Probably the best deal that I've seen for uh, Janeiro Procombans or Longevity Spinach in the LA area. $4 for a 4 inch or it's $5 for a 1 gallon. The, the 1 gallons were an amazing deal for $5. Those are quite established and really good plants. Um, I got uh, for $8, I got a little Moringa tree. And once again, you know, the Moringa greens are edible. And instead of growing a fruit tree where you got to wait for it to fruit once or twice a year, I could just pick and eat these greens. Um, this will probably grow in a container. Um, if the Moringa doesn't like a frost, so if there's frost in the area where you live, grow in a container and bring it in or put it in the greenhouse in the uh, winter time. Last year I tried to dig them up out of my garden and put them in containers and then bring them into my greenhouse. Out of six plants, only one survived, so I'm just going to grow them in a, a big container from the get-go this time. 
Um, and then next over here, I got two plants. Uh, they were $6 each, and these are turmeric plants. Once again, turmeric, another anti-inflammatory food, probably the most anti-inflammatory root, and anti-inflammatory foods are quite important. Even if you think you're on the best of diets, you probably still have some inflammation, uh, especially if you're into you know working out and doing all these things. Um, uh, anti-inflammatory foods are quite important and valuable for your health, and I encourage you guys to eat some, you know, uh, highly, deeply, rich, richly pigmented foods, and the turmeric is one of them. And what many people don't know is that the turmeric leaves here, you guys can see some nice leaves, um, are edible too, and they taste like turmeric. So I would harvest only the young baby leaves, and not too many, because these leaves don't grow super fast, not like a moringa. Um, and uh, you know, you could use this to roll up things and wraps, chop them up, put it in salads. Now they are quite fibrous, can be a little bit harder to digest, but they are quite edible, and most people don't know that. Over on this side, we got some horseradish. Horseradish is grown for that horseradish root. One of my favorites when I used to eat my former diet was a horsey sauce, which was horseradish sauce at Arby's. <laughs> I'd put it on the fries, actually, not the meat. Um, but yeah, the horseradish leaves, once again, they're also edible green that you, I don't think you can even find. If you tried to find them in a store, you can't. You could find the horseradish root, but not the leaves. You know, you could just pick and eat, you know, break off some of the piece of leaves and eat it. And guess what? When you eat it, it tastes like a green horseradish. Like, kind of, it tastes leafy, kind of like mustardy slash kale, um, but also a little horseradish bite. It's actually quite good. So yeah, this guy, I mean, this guy was actually from CPG. It's, it's rooting out of the bottom like crazy. Amazing deal there. Oh, and then finally I got a bunch of these guys from the Hollywood Farmers Market. We really make the rounds here. And uh, these guys are the jicama. So I don't encourage you guys to grow jicama unless you live in a place that actually has a long season. It doesn't frost here until maybe December. Um, so we have a nice long season. Jicama likes a really long season and it's best grown in a tropical climate. Um, otherwise, you're not going to get very big uh, jicama roots. But yeah, we're going to try it. You know, I always like to experiment with new and different things. This will be the second time I grew jicama here. The first time it was kind of small, but now I have way better soil. So we're going to see what happens. Uh, when I try to grow my jicama. They were um, actually $3 per pot at the Hollywood Farmer's Market. So I've saved the most expensive and best plants for last. Each one of these guys retail for $16, which is actually quite uh, expensive, but in my opinion are actually quite worth it. And the reason why is that these are called the Camellia sinensis, aka known as the tea plant, because if you ever had green tea, black tea, oolong tea, purer tea, it all comes from the tea plant or Camellia sinensis here. Um, these guys, although they don't even look that big, some of them have taken two or three years to grow. This guy is a two-year-old. And uh, let's see, these guys are more a little bit bushy and branchy and even has like a little uh, tea, seed, uh, tea seed pod or seed pod um, has taken three years to grow. So there's a lot of time invested in these guys to grow to this state. Um, these guys like an acid soil, that's very important. Don't just try to plant these out in your garden. I'm going to plant these in containers. They don't like full sun and they don't like weather above 95 degrees. So I'm going to be uh, putting a shade cloth over them. But how cool is it to be able to come to your plant and literally just pick a leaf off like this and just chew it up? Raw, uncooked, unprocessed, right? There's been studies that show that certain teas like the green tea have more phytonutrients and that's probably in my opinion because it's been processed less and once you start drying tea leaves and things you start losing the phytonutrients but if you just eat them raw like I'm doing now it's really cool because if you ever had like a strong like tea at a Chinese restaurant just in water with like no sugar I don't do any of that stuff sugar or cream or anything that's what this tastes like nice and strong and I'm not gonna eat like a ton of these leaves but you know, formerly I would use the matcha tea powder. I could be a slave to buying matcha tea powder, right? It's actually quite expensive. I like to add it to my green smoothies once in a while. Or I could just buy my own tea bushes and grow them out. And you know, because I got six of them, I could go around and harvest a few leaves every day and the plants aren't gonna miss it. I kind of like the two-year-old plants a little bit better than three-year-olds because they're kind of pushing more growth, more faster, more vigorous, kind of because they're like teenagers. And these guys have been kind of like, uh, you know, uh, uh, they've been uh, 
pruned and the, pr the prunings have been used for cuttings to make new plants and whatnot. And also, uh, you know, they had some 100 plus degree days at the nursery, so then these guys got a little bit of tip burn, whereas the new growth were under like a shade cloth and didn't. Anyways, yeah, another amazing plant you guys could grow, and I will have a video soon, if, not, it's, if it's not already up already, where I visited the nursery in Altadena, where I actually got these tea plants and go more into the, you know, growing of tea plants and some of the health benefits you can derive. So be sure to check my YouTube channel, Growing Your Greens, for the video on the Camellia sinensis. You know, something that I tried to grow before, but I'm going to be growing again, and I'm going to do it a lot better. Because last time I just planted the ground, I didn't really know you needed acid soils a long time ago. But I'm going to really take care of these guys so I can have my own tea. It's really important for me to grow, you know, at least a portion of my own food. As you guys saw, you know, like most of the fruit I buy, but a lot of the vegetables I grow. And you guys could do it too. Vegetables are a lot easier to grow on some levels than fruit trees. They take a much more minimal investment and they don't take as much time to produce. But hey, if you guys own your own land, plant a bunch of fruit trees because once you get them established, once they're growing, they're going to produce fruit for you year after year. And I do have my own fruit trees as well. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this episode. It's getting kind of late in the day. I got to put my fruit away actually in the fridge and uh, get these plants outside and get them watered. But if you guys enjoyed this episode with my produce and plant haul, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to share this with somebody that might inspire them about buying their fruits and vegetables wholesale. And I'll put links down below to the wholesale produce terminal so you guys can see exactly how I do it. So you guys can duplicate some of the amazing deals that I get. Also, links to uh, some of the places, the CPG nursery where I got the majority of my plants uh, this last trip. And yeah, also a link down below to how I store my fruit and the proper ways to store your fruit uh, so that it lasts a long time. Um, also be sure to click the subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes. I come out of every five to seven days. You never know where I'll turn up or what you'll be learning to uh, hopefully educate and help inspire you to eat more fresh fruits, vegetables, and herbs, and leafy greens, and even wild foods <laughs> that I have the opportunity to grow myself. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge, over 450 videos on this channel, dedicated to teach you guys all aspects on how to eat a, a fruit and vegetable dominated diet so you can be successful. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables and munch on some tea leaves. I'm a tea muncher. <laughs> They're always the best.